hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'll be showing you how to make this tie collar dress with an exaggerated sleeve from the thumbnail you already know what we are going to make today these are the materials i'll be working with and i have my basic bodice pattern that i'll be using to draft the upper part of this dress so now let me take you to the process of how i drafted my basic bodice pattern I am starting with the front pattern. I'll start by drawing a line at the top of the paper and that will serve as the shoulder line. Next, I'll mark the full length of the front pattern which is 17 inches. From the shoulder to the full length is 17 inches. The next thing is I'll be marking the shoulder to the chest line. The shoulder to the chest line I'm working with is 9.5 inches. So I'll come down from the shoulder by 9.5 inches and that will be the chest line the next thing i'll be marking is the shoulder to the bust line the shoulder to the bust line i'm working with is 11.5 inches from the shoulder line i'll come down by 11.5 inches and that will be the bust line now i'll go in with the shoulder measurements divided by two plus half inch allowance I'll mark it on the shoulder line and chest line and I'll connect with the ruler. The next thing now is to go in with the neckline. I'm using a neck width of 3.5 and, and a neck depth of 3 inches. And I'll come in with my curved ruler. I'll come down by 1 inch from the shoulder line and that will be for the shoulder slope and I'll connect it into the neckline. I am marking the bust measurements now, the bust measurement divided by 4. Then from the shoulder slope, I'll divide what I have there by 2 and make a point there. Then I'll come in by half an inch. Then I'll connect those three points together to form the hub hole. The next thing is to go here now with the waist measurements. The waist measurement divided by 4 plus 1 inch allowance for that. I'll be adding 1 inch allowance for that to the waist measurements. I'll mark it and I'll connect it to the chest line. Moving on, I'll divide the nipple to nipple measurements by 2. I'll mark it on the bust line and also on the waist line and I'll connect with the ruler. Remember we added 1 inch allowance for that to the waist line. So I'll take in half inch on both sides of the dart leg and I'll connect it to the bust line. And with that, the front pattern is ready. I'll cut it out now. Now to the back pattern. I'll start by leaving a space of half inch at the top of the paper and that will be the shoulder line. The next thing I'll do now is to mark the length of the back pattern. The length I'm also working with is 17 inches for the back pattern. So from the shoulder line, I'll mark 17 inches and I'll connect with a straight line. The next thing now is to mark our zip allowance. I'll be marking 1.5 inches at the side of the paper there. I'm using a pencil now because I'll still alter the zip allowance. So I'll connect with a ruler. From the shoulder line, I'll come down by 9.5 inches and that is the chest line. The next thing now is to mark the shoulder measurements divided by 2 plus half inch allowance. I'll mark it on the shoulder line and also on the chest line and I'll connect with the ruler. Next, I'll be plotting the neckline. I'm using a neck width of 3.5 and, and a neck depth of 2 inches for the back. I'll come in with the curve ruler and I'll connect with the curve. The next thing now is to come down from the shoulder line by 1 inch for the shoulder slope. I'll come down by 1 inch and connect the terrilla to the neckline. The next thing now is to come down to the waistline to alter the zip allowance. 
I'm coming in from the waistline by 0.75 inch and I'll connect it to the top just like you see me doing. I'm connecting it back into the neckline at the top. So from that point at the waistline where I came in by 0.75 inches, I'm now marking the 1.5 inches for zip allowance. So now that is our new zip allowance. The purpose of slanting the back a little bit is to eliminate any bulge at the center back. By doing this, there won't be any bulge at the center back of the dress. I'll mark the bust measurement divided by 4. I'll mark it on the chest line. Then from the shoulder slope, I'll divide what I have left by 2. And at the midpoint, I'll come in by 0.25. Then I'll come in with my curved ruler and form the armhole. Next, I'll mark the waist measurements divided by 4 and I'll add 1 inch allowance for that. I'll mark it and I'll connect it to the chest line. The next thing now is to go in with the bust pan measurements, that is the nipple to nipple measurement. I'll mark it on the waistline and also on the chest line and I'll connect with a ruler. From the chest line, I'll come down by 1 inch, that is where the dart will start from. So now from the dart leg, I'll go in by half inch on both sides. Then I'll connect it to that point where my dart is starting from. And with that, the back pattern is ready. I'll cut it out now. But before I cut out, I decided to use 1.5 inches for the neck depth instead of the 2 inches I used earlier. Before I transfer the front and the back pattern to fabric, I want to do a little bit of alteration to the front pattern. From the neckline, I'll come down by 2 inches and mark it. Then I'll just go in by 0.25 at the top of the neckline and I'll cut it off like so. It's as easy as that. I have transferred the patterns to fabric and I added a fin to the top of the paper an half inch at the bottom. Then for the joining allowance at the side, I had that 1.5 inches. I also cut my lining the same way I cut the fabric. The next thing now is to transfer the darts on the pattern to the fabric. I'll be transferring the darts to the main fabric and also to the lining. So now I will place my pattern paper on the fabric. Then I'll use my chalk to mark the points where the darts are. I'll just mark it like that and take my scissors to notch it. Then on the pattern paper, I'll mark the length of the dart. That is the length I'll be working with when I want to stitch my dart. I'll go over to the sewing machine now and place my lining on my fabric, right side facing the right side. You see that point at the center of the fabric that has a V-shape is the only part I'll be stitching. I'm not stitching around the neckline, I'm only stitching that part that has the V-shape. Remember that this dress has a collar around the neckline, both front and back, so we won't be closing the neckline. I'm only closing that V-shape part. For the back of the dress, I'll go ahead now and transfer the dart on the pattern to the fabric. Same thing I did to the front, I'll transfer the dart on the main fabric and also on the lining.
I am cutting the down part of the dress now. I am cutting a 180 degree flare first which will serve as the front of the dress. Once I am done cutting this first one, I will cut another 180 degree flare which will serve as the back. So all together, I will be having a 360 degree flare for both front and back. For the top of the flare, I divided the waist measurement by 2 and I added 15 more inches because I'll be doing a little bit of pleats in front and also for the back, I'll be doing the same thing. The waist measurement divided by 2 plus 15 more inches because of the pleats I'll be adding. So that's basically how I cut out the flare. This is what the front is looking like now. So I'll go ahead and notch the center point now. I'll go ahead and notch it a little bit, just close to the seam. I'll notch it so that it opens up easily. You can also go over to the ironing table immediately and iron the neck part. That V-shaped part, you, can, you iron it and also the darts, you iron it flat so that everything stays nice and flat. This is the back of the dress. You can see that I've also stitched the darts in place and I closed the center back. You can also go over to the ironing table now and iron the darts in place and also iron the center back. But now I'll be joining the front to the back on the shoulder. I'll pin the front fabric and the back fabric together, right sides facing each other. And I'll also pin the front lining and the back lining together, right sides facing each other. So that is how I will join the shoulder. I'll do the same thing to the other side also. Then once I'm done, I'll show you what to do next. This is it after I was done joining the shoulder. The next thing now is to join the sides together. So I'll go over to the sewing machine and join the sides with the allowance I left. Then I'll show you the next thing to do. After I was done joining the sides, I went ahead to cut out this long piece of fabric. But first, let's measure around the neckline so that we can know where our collar will stop. Then not determine the length we want the belt to be. So you measure around the neckline and you keep that measurement in mind. So now to determine the overall length of the collar, you have to determine how long you want the collar belt to be. So for mine, I cut out 60 inches for each side of the collar. So I cut out 60 inches for each side of the collar and I have 3 inches as the width. I have 3 inches as the width of the collar, 3 inches on fold. So that means if I open it up, it's 6 inches. So now from that point you measured out on the collar, you make a point there and notch it so that that is where you know that the main length is your belt, the collar belt. I'll go over to the sewing machine now and stitch the belt part of the collar. Once I'm done stitching, I'll show you what to do next. I am done stitching the belt part of the collar and I turned it inside out and I also went ahead to iron it properly. So now on the collar part I have 2 inches while on the belt part I have 3 inches width. So I just slanted it from that 2 inches straight down to meet the 3 inches point. That's basically what I did. You can see that the collar part is opened. I only closed the belt part. So it's the collar part I'll be attaching to the neckline of the dress like you see me doing now. So I'm just tucking the neckline inside the space I left on the collar part. So I'll pin it down now. I'll pin it down properly and go back to the sewing machine and stitch it. I'll do the same thing to the other side of the neckline. This is it after I was done stitching the collar in place and it's looking nice and neat. So go ahead and do yours too and iron it properly. Now it is time to work on the sleeve part. This 
this is the fabric I'll be using to cut out the sleeve. I want the sleeve very exaggerated, more than what is on the thumbnail. So the width I have here is 30 inches and the length is also 30 inches on fold. The fabric is on fold. Now I'll fold the fabric in a triangular form and that is how we'll be cutting out the sleeve. The sleeve will be having an elastic at the bottom and a little bit of gathers at the top. So you have to measure around your armhole so that you know exactly what you are working with and you know how many inches to add to the armhole so that you can have a little bit of gathers. Since my fabric is folded into four now, the measurement I got from the armhole, I'll just multiply it by four. That is what I'll be cutting out as the armhole at the top of the flare. Then I'll determine my length. The length I want to use is 16 inches. So that is what I'll be marking out here. And once I'm done marking, I'll cut it out. And this is just one of the sleeve. I'll be using this one to cut the second sleeve. I have cut out the other sleeve and I've also cut out lining for both sleeves. So the next thing I'll be doing now is to use the lining to turn the down part of the sleeve. So I'll go back to the sewing machine now and turn the down part of the sleeve with the lining. This is after turning the sleeve with the lining. You can see the down part is closed now. So I'll go ahead now and mark his 0.75 inch at the down part of the sleeve. That is where we'll be inserting the elastic into. So I'm marking this 0.75 all the way down to the end of the sleeve. And I'll go back to the sewing machine and stitch it down. Then I'll show you what to do next. This is after running a stitch at the down part of the sleeve. And that is where I'll be inserting the elastic into. I cut out my elastic and it is 11 inches. I'll be using the safety pin to insert the elastic into the sleeve. After inserting the elastic on the sleeve, I'll go ahead now and join the sides of the sleeve. This is after joining the side of the sleeve. I'll go ahead now and fix it to the top. I've already done one side of the sleeve and this is what it is looking like. I added a little bit of gathers at the top and that is exactly the same thing I'll be doing to the other side of the sleeve. I'll go ahead now and fix the other side of the sleeve to the dress. I'll fix the down part, that is the flare, and I'll also fix my zip and I'll show you the finished look of the dress. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please click on the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel and turn on your notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.